All Planet Side 2 infantry weapons have four basic attachments, a scope, barrel, rail and ammo. I'm going to go over every attachment and show you the different use cases for when they're good or bad. Generally speaking, you want to always be running a one-time scope instead of sometimes a one-times and sometimes a two-times scope because your mouse sensitivity will be way off if you sometimes are running a one-times and sometimes a two-times unless you adjust it every time, which would be an absurd thing to do. Generally speaking, most of the people most of the time will use a one-time scope but night vision one time scope is also okay as well. In my opinion, if you're at a point where you're at long enough ranges where you may as well be using a two or three time scope, at that point I would argue why not just use a bolt sniper. If you're shooting at those kind of ranges, if you peek your head for more than a second or two, it'll usually get shot rather quickly. And so even pragmatically, a longer scope at longer ranges because the decrease time to kill usually isn't worth it relative to a bolt action sniper. So you may as well just stick to one time scope in my opinion, or a night vision scope which once again is decent especially if the opposition has a smoke out it's even better then. In terms of barrel attachments there's a few different options. Suppressors are surprisingly good if you're in close quarters combat. Oftentimes in my videos you'll notice I'm running around a tower farming everyone and you're wondering why is everyone so oblivious to you being there. If you run both sensor shield and suppressor that can be a deadly combo in those close combat situations where the enemy isn't going to be expecting you to be there. Suppressor loses all of its usefulness in situations where you're just going to be running directly into the enemy and they're expecting people to be there anyway. So for example, large Zarg fights where you're going to be around other people and other people are going to be showing on the radar anyway, you may as well just not be running Sensor Shield or likewise a Suppressor. Flash Suppressor can be good for stopping the opposition's allies from seeing you when you're shooting one specific person because your bullets are essentially less visible when they're reaching the opponent. Compensator is generally agreed upon to be generally a good thing to run. Obviously if you're going to be hip firing a lot you wouldn't want to run compensator. So if you're like a light assault that's usually going to be hip firing a lot again compensator in that specific situation might not be worth running but for the majority of the time compensator is a good choice. Now there is also short barrel here short barrel can be good in combination with laser sight. So again with your playstyle, if you're going to be hip firing a lot it can make sense to be running short barrel and laser in combination. I should mention at this point the general reason that you want to be hip firing instead of aiming down sights is essentially when you hip fire you don't have to aim down sights before you shoot. So that means you have potentially a lower time to kill than someone who's using a weapon which has really good aim down sight accuracy but might have awful hip fire. And so as a result, because you essentially can engage the opposition faster because you don't have to aim down sights fast, that does offer you an advantage. Likewise, when you're hip firing, your movement speed isn't nerfed. You may have noticed when you're aiming down sights, you actually strafe left and right slower, which makes you a lot easier to hit. So again, in that specific situations, weapons which promote hip fire based on their stats and have good attachments to go along with it, like short bow and like laser, allow you to strafe much faster, which makes you harder to hit, and, and you can engage your op opponent, especially compared to someone that has to aim down the sights fast. This is especially good if you're playing at a high pace and you're kind of sprinting a lot, going around a lot of corners. Hip fire in that kind of situation is deadly. Now, keeping what I said in mind, heavy barrel, on the contrary, makes it harder to kind of strafe left and right when aiming down the sights, which is the exact opposite of what you want. You want to be strafing left and right nice and fast. Heavy barrel makes that more difficult to do, which is why a lot of people don't like heavy barrel for that specific reason, even though it does make your accuracy better, and technically it is a little bit better than compensator, but the trade-off just is not worth it. Okay, now we're going to go on to the rail attachments. I've already mentioned laser sights, so we'll just kind of start there. Lasers, again, can be good if you want to be strafing rather fast, you want to be hip firing. This can be a really useful attachment in close quarter combat. I will occasionally use it even in tower farming as an example, but it really does depend on the gun and also on the distances that you're going to be hip firing from. Laser fast grip is one of those things where you're going to have to try to figure out the ratio to which you're going to be generally engaging people at range and you're going to be aiming down sights versus the amount of people that you're going to be hip firing and see if that trade-off is worth it because forward grip is essentially just better at aiming down sights and decreases the recoil of your gun 
From what I understand, angled grip is nice to use on low rate of fire guns. With these guns, you would usually reset your cone of fire after two or three shots, and so angled grip can make sense to use in those specific guns, but in many other guns it would be better to use forward grip generally speaking. Extended magazine can be awful to use on some guns and really good to use on others. Now keep in mind this means you won't be running laser, you won't be running forward grip, but you know they can be good choices to use. In LMGs they double the amount of ammo capacity that you have within that one clip, so this can make sense to use for LMGs sometimes I guess. It is essentially keeps your uptime higher. In other weapons it increases the amount of kills you can have before having to reload. For example on the SMG guns they oftentimes will have like 30 ammo and increasing it to 40 ammo can be really useful because that might be an extra kill. Now arguably on SMGs the reload time isn't that awful and you shouldn't be getting 4 kills in a row as an infiltrator anyway, you're there to pick off a few people then run away. But you know again their extended magazine is okay. Personally if you're in a kind of like a point hold situation with an LMG I would much rather see people using scavenger and using that to reload you know a 6 second reload gun or a 5 second reload gun on NC or TR like with the butcher but that's just my personal preference. We do also have the flashlight here. I don't really think this has any utility anymore, it used to be okay for finding infiltrators which were ghost capping points that you couldn't find, but the devs took that out like 3 years ago so there's no point running flashlight really anymore, I don't think it's something you generally need. There is also the under barrel grenade launcher, this can be nice to use in a tunnel farming session if that's something you want to enjoy. In combination, especially with Symbiote and Survivalist, and maybe Auxiliary Shield and Resist or something crazy like that, or maybe you want to use a Thumper instead of um, Grenade Launcher, you know, it can be useful to use Underbarrel Grenade Launcher, but again, at that point, you could just be using a Thumper, so it's okay to use, it's not amazing. Smoke Grenade Launchers can be okay to use as well, especially if you're doing an Ops and you have like 24 people running Smoke Grenade Launchers, it can actually be generally very viable for kind of a point hold. Again, if you've got everyone running night vision at the same time, you know, it's a nice thing to use. I've heard of Jimsy doing that, I think, as an example. Okay, so the last part to go over here is ammunition. We have soft point ammunition versus high velocity ammunition. Generally speaking, soft point ammunition is going to be the better choice. The argument for high velocity ammo is that it makes your opponent easier to track at medium ranges. So basically you don't have to lead your gun as much if you're using high velocity ammo. Irrespective of that, usually people will choose to pick soft point ammunition, which essentially increases the damage profile of your gun at long range. And there we go, in 8 minutes we've gone over all of the generic attachments, but there are some specific stuff that we still do need to go over. First off for the shotguns we've got the choice between slug and flash A ammo. Usually most people prefer slug, especially in combination with laser sights so you can hit fire from longer distances. Keep in mind if you're going to be doing this you're not going to want to run smart choke which essentially only makes your gun more accurate when you're aiming down the sights but in fact makes it less accurate if you're not aiming down the sights. So don't use smart choke if you're going to be hip firing with a shotgun. Next thing I quickly want to touch on here is bolt action snipers. With bolt action snipers you generally speaking want to be running a 4x scope in combination with a straight pulled bolt. The straight pulled bolt will allow you to reload a bullet in your chamber whilst you're aiming down the sights which can be a nice quality of life feature. There are also some unique attachments for unique guns. For example, instead of a pistol, you can run a crossbow. And if you run the crossbow, you can use detection darts. And they essentially give you detection, even on, say, for example, Engineer. But the detection only lasts for 7 seconds, even though in the description it says it should last 12 seconds. A bug REL has never fixed, from what I understand. If REL does ever change that, just remind me now to delete this part of the video. There is also unstable ammunition, which a lot of the Vanu weapons will have. Unstable ammunition essentially negates damage to the head and makes it just like a normal body shot in terms of damage, but the bullet profile is bigger, which makes it easier to shoot your opponents, which salty vets seem to really not find enjoyable to fight against. Personally, I don't rate it very high, but some people really do think unstable ammunition is underrated and using it in combination with laser sight and short barrel for them is something they enjoy and fair enough might be something worth trying out. You also have K-cap ammunition on the TR weapons which reduces the damage penalty from shooting 
people in the legs but also decreases the headshot damage. I don't think this is generally speaking considered a good ammunition type. One of the notable ammunition types that I haven't mentioned so far is the incendiary rounds on the thumper which can be nice to kind of slow down an opposition advanced as they run back to medkit and get back to full health or wait for their shields to recharge. It's not good at killing the opponents but it is good from kind of slowing them down. Again remember you want to think about the playstyle that you want that class loadout to be for. Then pick a gun that's going to be either good for aiming down sights or good for hip fire, and then pick attachments which are good for that specific situation. Generally speaking in planet side 2 your skill will come down to your skill, it won't come down to what weapon you're using. Attachments can help but really just getting better infantry skill really is where it's at. Now what would be interested to hear is there anything that you think that I got wrong or I could improve next time I make this type of video in you know five or six months or whatever. I always try to go through the comments of the previous video in order to make amendments for the next iteration of that type of video you know again in six months and if I've got anything wrong again I will pin that to the top of the comments. I think this time I've pretty much got everything correct. If you liked this video I do encourage you to subscribe to the channel because it does help so much to subscribe and of course like the video. As always it's been a pleasure have a wonderful week I'm out GG bye bye